Hey everyone, it's Debbie of DBT Path at EmotionallySensitive.com and I'm just doing a spontaneous thing for a couple of minutes here um, because I had just an awesome moment and being an emotionally sensitive person, I want to share it with you um, because I know so many of you are emotionally sensitive or suffer from BPD traits and are emotionally sensitive because of that, so I'm sharing. And this is kind of raw. I'm just using my um, my iPad here and trying to make sure I'm talking loud enough that the microphone is picking it up so we don't have the issue we had last time. I don't have my lighting, my nice lighting and everything, so please just excuse that. Um, and it's a little bit shaky. So, yeah, I'm just streaming live from the iPad, and that's why it's not looking as polished as it usually does. But hello, everyone. Um, I just had I had a really good moment just now, and... It was related to something that I think is really teachable and something that I can share with you and potentially it could um, help you as well if um, if it resonates with you and if you can relate to it. And so it's about the importance and the power of the thoughts that we have. And no, this is not going to be one of those woo-woo, new agey things where it's like, okay, you can think about this and make it happen or magical thinking or anything like that. It's actually something that does have basis in neuroscience and it's about how the thoughts that we think about and focus on and allow ourselves to ruminate on actually affect our nervous system, actually affect how we feel mentally, actually affect how we feel physically. So very much from a scientific perspective, not from any kind of weird thing. Although I do respect people who um, who have beliefs around thoughts that are um, that are also spiritual and that sort of thing. So if you're just joining now, hello everyone, feel free to comment down below. This is live so I can actually connect with you and, and um, respond. I'm sorry it's shaky. I need to come up with an idea for holding the iPad where it doesn't um, block the microphone, but that's why it's shaking right now. So I want to tell you um, a couple of little examples of me kind of seeing this in action with this whole idea about thoughts affecting how we feel physically and mentally. And maybe you'll feel inspired. Again, maybe it will resonate with you. Maybe you'll find it helpful and you'll be able to use it. So one of the things was, um, I don't know, some of you might not know that um, I actually suffer from multiple sclerosis. So I have MS. And um, Last Friday, I started having some symptoms, and if you have MS, well, this is what I was told by my neurologist, if I have symptoms that last for more than 24 hours, I need to let them know to make sure I'm not having a new relapse, and the way that they check for that is I go in for an MRI, and, um, hi, Teresa Rose, hi, Romina, oh my gosh, are you in Mexico or Canada right now, Romina? Sorry, everyone, <laughs> got excited, we had some comments come in. Um, so... The, you go in for an MRI and they look for n new lesions and they look for infl inflammation and that sort of thing. And f and my um, thing has been if there is something new, then I have to go on steroids to suppress the, um, the inflammation and to reduce the damage on my nervous system, on my brain and spinal cord, right? Yes. Oh, hi, Kate. She says, I have English people watching. Oh, it's late over there, Kate. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for you guys um, taking time out of your day to hang out with me. I was saying earlier, please don't mind the lighting and the way I look and the shakiness. I just, I don't, I, this is spontaneous. I don't have my nice lighting set up and I'm holding the iPad so you guys can hear me through the mic and it's like, rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> it's all shaking all over the place. Do they have, um, do they have tripods for iPads or like a selfie stick for an iPad? That would be so cool. Um, okay, so back to back to this whole point uh, of this teachable that I went through that I hope will help you in some way, maybe if not today, then in the future, right? So on Friday when I started feeling badly, I said, look, I don't want to panic because I do have anxiety and I do have a little bit of a tendency toward hypochondria. You know, it's gotten a lot better over the years, but I'm kind of like my my practitioners that work with me kind of know that I have had issues with anxiety and that I sometimes panic when things happen health-wise and I start thinking the worst, you know, and I'm worrying that things are, um, are you know, are, are going bad. And so um, I really wanted to show maturity and growth and I emailed my neurologist. Um, I waited till Monday. This is just a couple of days ago here. Where are we now? Today is what, Wednesday? 
So I emailed her on Monday and I said, hey, um, I'm having these symptoms. I don't want to panic and I, I just going to be calm about this, but I wanted to let you know because it has lasted more than 24 hours. So I'm expecting, so here's my expectation, right? Because when our expectations don't match reality, that can affect our emotions and, and trigger certain emotions, right? So my expectation was, you know, I'm being calm and I'm collected and I'm not freaking out and panicking and I'm sending this email and I'm showing that I'm composed and I'm not saying, oh my God, I'm having symptoms, I need to go to the emergency room, which I would have done in the past, no joke. Um, but you know, so I'm expecting her to write back and say, okay, well, I don't think it's a big deal and don't worry. And thanks for reaching out and, you know, stay in touch. Well, that's not what she said. That was my expectation. That's truly what I believed was going to happen. And that wasn't, that did not match reality. So in reality, she wrote back and said, I think it would be a good idea if we had you go in for an MRI to make sure that you're not having a new relapse to make sure that you don't need to be treated. And in that moment, when I read that email, the disappointment and the fear and the frustration and the anxiety and uh, just all of that stuff that came up in that moment, I felt worse physically because she said that she thought something could be wrong and that this could be something that needed medical attention and that I needed to go for an MRI. I I felt worse. Do you, have you guys ever experienced that where, you know, based on something that somebody says, it affects how you feel physically and or mentally? So this is just one example, right? Um, so I felt like my symptoms felt stronger and um, I said, oh my gosh, maybe there is something wrong with me. So my thoughts started to change from being kind of positive and optimistic and staying on the sunny side of life to, oh my gosh, she thinks there's something wrong. Maybe there is. Now I don't feel so good. Oh, I'm feeling worse. And that really, that was what I was experiencing in my body and in my mind. Um, as a result of the words that I heard and, and taking them in and, and, and internalizing that and then starting to have thoughts and concepts and reactions to that, which triggered emotions, which triggered symptoms in my body as well. Now, I was just talking with my online students about this recently that emotions are called feelings for a reason because we actually feel them in our bodies. So you know when you get angry, sometimes you can feel the tension, you can feel the heat in your face, you can feel the tightness in your muscles, or when you feel sad, you can feel like just everything is sagging and you're feeling really slow and weighed down. We feel our emotions in our body, and I definitely had an episode like that of just starting to feel a lot of things in my body. And with MS, and many of you um, out there, I think a lot of you do have chronic conditions as well, so it may be with other disorders as well, um, but because my particular thing that I have is so, um, it's, it's affecting the nervous system, um, I felt it even more. So I was feeling it in my symptoms, literally feeling the anxiety, the fear, all of that in the tingling. I'm going like this because I was feeling it in the tingling in my hands and the numbness and, you know, different parts of my body. So then um, I decided to stay, go back on the sunny side of life and say, hey, I'm going to radically accept that I have an unpredictable chronic neurological issue. And whether this is new damage that has to be treated or it's old stuff that is aggravated, like old nerve damage, all I can do is just take one moment at a time and do what I need to take care of myself. That's called radically accepting the situation and saying, I don't like this. I don't want it to be this way. I prefer it be another way, but I'm looking at the situation as it is and, um, and taking it moment by moment. So I'll tell you what happened with the MRI today, but I see, um, comments coming in. So let's see. Kate's telling me to get a Samsung. I have a Samsung phone, but Facebook only lets you do live streaming on iOS devices, on Apple devices. That's why I'm holding my shaky iPad right now. Thank you, though. I would It would be so awesome if they would allow it on Samsung phones, and maybe it will come to Android soon. Kate says she has to sleep now. It's 2.19 a.m. in England, and she says, but you are such a brave woman. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in for a few minutes, and um, get some good sleep there. 
And Romina says, absolutely. So she's, you have experienced that, Romina, where you actually um, can feel your emotions in your body. So like the sensations associated with emotion. And Teresa saying goodnight to Kate also. That's sweet. And then Kate says, I really want to watch to the end, but I think I have, oh no, she thinks she has a kidney infection. Oh my, please take care of yourself. And she said, you made me feel so much stronger about it and not so panicky now. Oh, huge hugs to you. Please go get that checked by your doctor. Don't play around with that. And um, let us know tomorrow. Maybe come back to this thread. Um, this replay will be up. So don't worry. You're not going to miss out. Um, you'll be able to come back. This will turn into a recording after I disconnect from being live so you can watch it tomorrow okay so take care of yourself Kate all right all right so um so I went for the MRI today and I wasn't who, who is ever feeling it to have an MRI right but I totally wasn't feeling it I was like it's a beautiful day in California northern California it was in the 80s today it's very very hot um, I would have much rather have been doing something else um, and having the windows open and, you know, or being outside a little bit or something um, than being in an MRI tube for like an hour and a half. But anyway, I had to do it. I had to get an injection, a contrast injection. I, had, I just, I decided not to be stubborn and to go with it. So to be really willful, which is another DB, I mean, willing, which is another DBT skill. So not fighting against what you need to do to be effective and to take care of yourself, even if you don't really want to do it. So radical acceptance came into play, DBT skill. Being willing came into play and was very helpful. And then I waited a couple of hours and my neurologist wrote back. And the subject line was your test results. And I was ready to embrace whatever it was with skillfulness, whether it meant I was going to have to go to the infusion clinic or the ER to get my steroids for three days, or if I was going to be told, no, you don't need to. And lo and behold, I'm very pleased to tell you guys that um, I do not have a new lesion. I don't have new damage. Um, I'm just having a resurgence of old damage, um, old nerve damage from a previous relapse that's causing the symptoms. And so how did I feel when I got that news from my neurologist and how the, did that impact my mood and my demeanor and my thoughts and the concepts I was having and how I felt in my body? As you can imagine, it was a very different experience. In fact, I almost cried tears of joy because I was so grateful and so happy that I wasn't going to have to put my body through steroids and that I didn't have new damage that could have caused, you know, additional problems neurologically in my brain or my spine. So um, after that email, literally almost tears of joy. So I was feeling that in my body, right? I was expressing gratitude to the universe. Um, I was reaching out to people who had sent me good thoughts and said they were going to be praying and people that um, were just like being really supportive when I put it out there that I was going through this and dealing with this. And um, so I was going through with all my gratitude and thanking people. Very different feeling emotionally, right? So... Yes, news affects us, um, the, the words we hear, the things that people say to us, the way we internalize it, the way we manage it, the way we use skills or don't use skills, all affects how we feel emotionally and physically. Um, yeah, so that I, I had another example, but that was my main one, and I hope it makes sense to you guys in terms of, um, you know, on Friday when I got that news and I felt worse, I probably wasn't worse. It was my response, my my thoughts and my internalization and what I was doing with the information that I had instead of saying, oh, okay, so for example, there, there's another way I could have, maybe I can get a little bit more comfortable here. There is, can you guys still hear me okay? I just want to make sure I'm not blocking the microphone if I sit like this so that I don't have to like disconnect right now. <laughs> I want to make sure you can still hear me, um, but I have to get a little bit more comfortable here. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, there's a delay. Thank you, Kat. I appreciate that. Thanks, Romina. Um, yes, Romina's saying the mind is powerful, and I'll get to some more comments. Um, why don't I do that real quick, just so, because it's so awesome that we're live, so I want to I want to be utilizing this. Becky can relate. Thank you, Becky, about um, this whole thing. Oh, she can hear me. Okay, thank you, Becky. And Sally, too. Um, let's see. Sally says she has fibromyalgia too and definitely feels her emotions in her body. That's another one, um, Miss Sally, that I hear is, um, 
kind kind of like MS in the sense of your body, once you find out you have like something like that, feels like a barometer for your emotional experience. So you feel the stress, you feel your different emotions in your body so much more is what I've heard. And that's how I describe my experience of MS as an emotionally sensitive person is it's like a barometer of my emotions. I can tell even before I might be able to tell mentally that I'm stressed or sad or whatever because I feel it somewhere in my body with some kind of sensation. It's very interesting. Kate says, yay, I heard I can watch tomorrow. Excellent, excellent. And Velasco, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, says that she or he can hear me. <laughs> um, yes, and Sally says, yeah, and I go into fight or flight often, and that makes sense. I don't know too much about fibromyalgia as to whether it uh, activates the nervous system easily like MS does. Um, in my case, um, I think in general, but I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to generalize anything. Um, hi, Jody. Jody says, I have epilepsy, and when I have partial seizures and coming out of them, then becoming depressed after, oh, that makes sense. I've heard many times about people who experience feelings of depression after seizures from all kinds of conditions. Again, I'm not a medical doctor. We're having a conversation as peers. Um, she says, or when my BPD is set off, I can have partial seizures due to being stressed. Wow. Yeah, imagine just that activation of the nervous system and things happening in, in our brains. It's just, it's amazing um, and, and powerful stuff. So, um, so yeah, I was, okay guys, so I was just going to give the example of what if, to think about it from a skillful perspective, because I'm still... I'm still growing, still using the skills, still learning right alongside everyone that I work with. And I was reflecting on this and I thought, you know, in that moment that I felt all the symptoms in my body after I read the message and got kind of activated and nervous and started going to the thoughts of, oh my gosh, maybe something's wrong. That's very human. Most people would do that if they were not expecting the doctor to be concerned. And the doctor says, yes, you need an MRI. Most people are going to be alarmed. And that is that can activate your nervous system and then you have emotions and anxiety. Um, so that was very human. I'm not, um, I'm not putting myself down for that or saying that that was wrong or an unskillful response. That was a human response. However, in reflection, I think about, I could have reduced my suffering and, and I'll use this information next time. And this is something that I'm putting out there for you two to just a little, a little seed to think about maybe the next time you notice a, um, an emotional reaction to some news or a message or something that someone says, is if I had looked at it with a little, just a little bit more distance, like a little bit more, more mindfully, um, if I had had a little bit of curiosity and said, oh, that's interesting, instead of necessarily jumping to, oh, she wants me to get the test because something's probably really wrong, it could have been, oh, she wants to get the test and we're probably just being precautious. You know, in the past, I have asked for the test, and, you know, maybe this is what that's about. I could have asked. I could have fact-checked. I could have, instead of making assumptions of in any direction, could have said to her, well, um, what's the thinking behind wanting to get this test and wanting to do it? I mean, do you think something? So, in retrospect, there, are, there were different ways that it could have been handled, and some of them might have reduced my suffering, might have reduced the physiological response I was having in my body to the emotions. So I don't know if anyone can relate to that, um, but it, you may be going along in life in the next week or two, or who knows, maybe a year down the line, and remember this and think, okay, I'm having one of those moments of choice, one of those moments that Debbie was talking about where I just got some news or I got a message or someone said something and I noticed this immediate reaction from my nervous system. I noticed I'm suffering in some way as a result of that reaction, whether it's physical, mental, and what can I do right now to reduce my suffering? Can I, is there any way I can fact check right now? Is there any way I can look at this from different perspectives that maybe it's not the thing that my reaction is saying that it must be, um, how can I take care of myself in this moment? What skills can I use? Can I radically accept? Can I be willing? Can I fact check? Um, that sort of thing. So um, let me see because more is coming in on the chat. Romina says curiosity is such a great skill. I agree. I have something else I want to talk to you guys about in the future about using curiosity when we're dealing with emotions. So 
I'm glad that you think so too, Romina. So does um does anyone have any questions or any other comments for me before I sign off for now? And by the way, I know I look very red and that is a side effect of my medication, <laughs> the MS medication. And sometimes I just get really flushed like this and you can't you can't hide it or cover it with makeup, unfortunately. It just it comes right through. Not that you guys necessarily care about that, but um, I just notice it's kind of striking to me when I see myself on the display. It's kind of like, okay. Um, I don't see anything coming in. Go in once, comments or questions about this whole idea about feeling our emotions in our body and our reactions and our, our thoughts affecting how we feel and also um, when our expectations don't meet reality and how that impacts how we feel emotionally and the thoughts we have, etc., etc. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Romina. Romina says you look beautiful, hon. You always look beautiful, Miss Romina. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that compliment. I will receive that. Thank you. <laughs> um, Velasco says that happens to me and I feel sometimes in the moment a deep breath makes me calm, but my brain foggies. And you know what? There's science to support that a deep breath can help us to feel calm, to just slow down and do it like a diaphragmatic breath and to slowly take in the air and slowly release. That actually does impact our nervous system. It's not your imagination. Kat says, can you give any radical acceptance tips for medical things? Sure. <laughs> so, um... I use radical acceptance all the time with my chronic health condition. When I notice myself, um, cat, going into, I hate this, I don't want to feel this way, I shouldn't have this, this isn't fair, why is this happening, and, you know, I want this to be over, I want to feel better now, all of those things inevitably only bring suffering because, again, it's kind of like the expectations not matching reality, but it's my desire, my thoughts, my wishes not matching reality. Of course I want to feel better. Of course you want to feel better. Anybody who's suffering, who has pain, who's not feeling well physically wants to feel better. So we do what we can. We problem solve. We talk to our physicians. We talk to our um, practitioners that we work with for the, the health issues. So we're practical about things. And then I like to do meditations or um, mindfulness practices or even just thinking about the fact that it is what it is right now, and it may not be pleasant, but this is reality in this moment. This is what's happening. X, Y, Z symptom is present. It's here. And how can I best take care of myself physically and mentally while it's here? So accepting the fact that it's here allows us to take the best care of ourselves. But if we keep pushing away and trying to resist the reality of what's here, it doesn't make it go away. It's like counterproductive. But the interesting thing is our brains are wired so that we are trying to move away from and escape pain and suffering um, for survival purposes, but we are working through mindfulness to, to realize that it's not always possible to do that, and we're only increasing our suffering. So radically accepting would be to say, I don't have to agree with this. I don't have to like this. I don't appreciate having this particular thing going on right now. Um, it doesn't have to just be chronic illness, but Kat was asking about that because that's what my example was about today. But it can be any situation in life that you're facing that you wish were different than it was right now. And that's not to say that you're a doormat. That's not to say that you can't have ambition and try to change circumstances that you're facing that you don't like and that you don't want them to be that way in your life. But you first have, with radical acceptance, we first have to acknowledge where things are in the present moment as they are, then we can go from there. I hope that was helpful, Kat. Please let me know if you have any other questions or if that was, if I need to explain something else on that. <clears throat> so I'm like taking tea press. I'm like, I'm so excited. I just like got so excited after that email from the um, neurologist. Um, Sally says, thank you for sharing your knowledge. You're very welcome, Sally. Thank you for joining me and taking time out of your life, your precious and valuable time to be here with me live on here. It's so awesome to have you. Tiffany says, when will you be doing this again? Hi, Tiffany. Glad you're here. 
Um, I'm just right now doing them spontaneously. I may do some that are scheduled and pre-announced just so people can know that I'm here. But for now, it's just been really kind of spontaneous. And when the mood hits and when there's really something to talk about and like a teachable moment or something. Um, so these, these haven't been planned yet. <laughs> All right. Velasco says, last for about a month. Oh, there's a disconnect between, I think, maybe the last thing you... Oh, the fogginess can last for about a month. Yeah, we can find ourselves in those states for long periods of time, Velasco. And I hope you're working with someone who can support you through that. I hope you're working with a really good therapist. Sally says, I took an eight-week mindfulness class six months ago and have meditated daily since. It helps. Awesome. I took an eight-week mindfulness class, too. Did you take it at Kaiser by any chance? Um, and it did. It was so helpful. Yeah, that's awesome, Sally. Kat says, my response to her about using radical acceptance with illness was very helpful. That's very cool. Thank you, Kat. I appreciate knowing that. Thanks for the feedback. And then Erin says, this is so cool. Yes, do it again, Debbie. Miss Erin, a longtime student of my online classes. I do an online class every week at EmotionallySensitive.com. And Erin has been with me. Erin, how long have you been with me? You've been with me for a while now and um, just has grown exponentially and been a source of support to other students. And I just adore you. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. I don't know why I have this like nervous laugh after everything. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the beauty of live where you can't edit and uh, I would be cu probably cutting all of that out. So I'm just being raw and vulnerable and it's, I'm a little bit nervous. I will be honest with you. So if I'm a little giggly or something, that's why. Hello, Danny Dan. Danny Dan says, I've been untreated for three years. No help from mental health team, but portrayed as violent, yet no help. What am I meant to do? Danny, I am so sorry you're experiencing this. I don't know what country you're in um, or what area of the country you're in. And if you could post it down in the comments, if not during this live presentation, maybe after when people are going through the comments, um, maybe we can uh, ask people if they know of any resources in your area where you could get some support um, and, and get in, the, in that direction of getting the support and treatment that you're, you're seeking and that you certainly deserve. And I'm sorry you're going through that. It's 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 not easy to go through this stuff alone. It's so important that we find a qualified mental health professional to, to help us. I still go to therapy. I still um, go to one-on-one. -on -one. I still go to group meetings. So, I mean, we're never, well, some people might feel at some point that they don't need it anymore. But um, I'm just saying it's not, It's this is not easy stuff to do completely on our own. So. I hope you will find some resources and that people in this that are here today or who come across this thread can help as well. <sighs> Thank you, Candace. Candace says, I think you're being courageous and it's awesome. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Kat says, radical vulnerability is so brave. You guys are, you guys are the best. I, I'm honored and blessed to be connected with all of you around the globe and to have this time and space for us to connect live is really, isn't it great? I love this. Um, Velasco says, I am working with one and I get a lot of support from following great people like you on Facebook. I just never had the chance to catch you live, but this makes me feel some sort of support. Thank you so much. What You guys are awesome. Danny says, I'm in the UK, 40 years of this now, and I'm just at the point Okay, he's, um, I have to not say that aloud, Danny, because it could trigger some people, and I need to also um, encourage you to please reach out locally and professionally um, to not take what you're feeling lightly. Um, calling a crisis line or going to see someone at the crisis clinic or at the, at the hospital, it's very, very, very important. It's essential that you take care of yourself and talk to someone who is qualified who can help you because you deserve that help, and please don't take this lightly. It's very, very important. And then um, we're all we're, we're all rooting for you and care about you in this moment. And you're not alone. Okay. Um, just touched my heart so much. Janet says, in response to Sally's, I would be 
Yeah, she's got some, Sally's got, uh, Janet's responding to Sally's comment about something else that was going on with previous, it uh, sounds like self-harm behaviors, so um, thank you for being supportive of each other with that. And Cheryl says, this is great, I'm glad I caught this, you help so many people. It is my pleasure, and um, this is just one of the things I'm meant to do, and I'm happy to do it. And I, I do genuinely care about you guys and think about you, I'd say... I think about the, like, like how many followers I have on Facebook or Twitter or wherever it might be. And throughout the day I'll say, I'm thinking of these people and, and sending good wishes to these 8,600 people or whatever the number is at now. And like I, actu I actually do think about you guys and I sometimes go and as the um, person who owns the page, I can go and actually see a list of all the names and sometimes I'll look at them and say, okay, I'm sending good vibes to Kelly, I'm sending good vibes to Cheryl, I'm sending good vibes to Romina or Janet. So I don't know if it really does anything, but just know that I'm thinking of you and in, in that moment, you're not alone because someone else on the planet is thinking about you and sending you good thoughts and, and something from the heart. Kat, that is so awesome. Kat says, you inspired me to seek DBT treatment, and I'm now in a two-year outpatient program thanks to you directly. Oh, my gosh, Kat. Congratulations. That is amazing. It's It means so much to me to know that I, in whatever way it was, some small way was a part of your journey and, and your decision to pursue um, getting treatment. And now you're doing the hard work. So <laughs> that is so awesome. Thank you. It is reminding me of, are you guys familiar with the book, The Buddha and the Borderline by Kira Van Gelder? Um, Kira Van Gelder wrote this amazing memoir about her experience with borderline personality disorder and her recovery. And it was one of the first books I read when I was diagnosed. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like I couldn't relate to everything that she said, but so much of it I did. And I was so inspired and encouraged by her story and her perseverance of everything she had been through and, you know, her recovery. And we're now connected and we're now friends. So it's like, um, I get that. I get uh, that feeling of being able to directly speak to someone who um, inspired you on your journey. And I, I can't tell you how awesome it is for me to be that person because I think of Kira as one of those people that that was that person for me so to, for me to be that person for someone else is amazing and Kat maybe at some point you will be that person for someone else maybe many of you if not all of you watching this will get to a point where um, when you get into your own recovery and you're in a place of helping other people and inspiring them and you'll be that person that's getting all of the accolades or getting um, these thank yous and, and that sort of thing. I really believe that for you. Um, let's see. Janet says, mine's wellness benefits are the same as with the new adult coloring. Oh, I, I think the adult coloring is, is, is pretty awesome. I know a lot of people who are doing it and finding that or saying that they're uh, experiencing a lot of benefits from the mindfulness of sitting there and doing the coloring as adults. Uh, and I have a book as well, the mindfulness for um, coloring book. Oh, Janet lost my audio. Can you, are, am I back, Janet? Do you have me back? Tiffany says, I have PTSD and BPD. Um, I as well, so I um, was diagnosed with complex borderline personality disorder, so PTSD. So it wasn't just one event, it was many events. And DBT has helped me beyond what I can express um, with dealing with PTSD symptoms and allowed me to actually be able to do a trauma recovery group as a patient, as an attendee. Um, I tried to do a trauma recovery group before I learned DBT and I was not able to stick with it. It was it was just too much. I couldn't handle it at that time in my life. But after um, a couple of years, a few years of DBT, um, I was able to successfully complete a um, trauma recovery program and it changed my life even more in terms of um, allowing me to build a life that I want because I wasn't so held back from past traumas and I I do talk about that a lot in my weekly class at emotionally sensitive.com because we have a lot of people who take the class who have BPD traits but then we have people who do not have or don't identify that way but they say hey I have PTSD we have a lot of people with bipolar as well 
um, people who don't have any diagnosis, but I do speak sometimes in the class about the PTSD aspect because DBT has helped me so much with that too. It's not just borderline personality disorder that it helped with, but seriously, a, a substantial amount with my PTSD as well. Um, Tiffany says it's very hard. I know. It really is. It really is. Um, Velasco says, what's the name of that book again, please? It's, it's called The Buddha and the Borderline, and it's by Kira Van Gelder, and Kira is K-I-E-R-A. If you want some, um, maybe I'll post something soon with my resources, like my, my uh, recommended um, books and stuff like that. That's, that might be a good idea. Kat says, yes, I hope we can all inspire others one day. I believe that. I really do. Janet says, I was having trouble writing my comment while you are talking. It is picking up both, so I apologize for the multiple half messages. I wanted to come in as a facilitator of bereaved parent support group. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I know it's hard to navigate and, and comment while you're watching someone because I've tried it and it kind of like closes them out and then you can't hear them, so... Very proud of you for wanting to go in that direction. I'm just reading here. Um, Kat, or Janet is saying um, that she uh, also is, let's see, she wanted to come in as a facilitator of a brief parent support group and also a facilitator on numerous mental health and chronic pain pages on Facebook. It's been recognized that the benefits of meditation traditionally are equal to uh, that of new adult coloring, which I have introduced into my parents group and is doing extremely well. What are your thoughts on this? I don't know. Um, I don't have any statistics to back anything up. I can only tell you in my personal experience that meditation has been helpful and that a lot of people I work with have express that doing the coloring has been a meditative process for them so there's probably some kind of connection or correlation there but as far as one being more effective than the other or being equal to an effectiveness i couldn't really speak on that other than from personal experience and and from observations i've seen so um yeah but it's a great question though janet and then cats yes the book you're welcome for let's go janet still doesn't have audio bummer Tiffany says, if I'm in an outpatient program and I'm also in a DBT group for the next six months. Excellent, excellent. Tiffany, work it. These skills can be so life-changing. Work it. <laughs> Take advantage of every moment that you have in that program. She also has four kids under 12. Wow. A mom with young kids who's working it. Velasco says, yay. Thank you guys so much. I am going to wrap it up because for all I say about self-care, I do need to make some dinner and have something to eat for dinner. <laughs> I was so excited when I got back. I didn't even want to do anything else but get on here after I got the email and thanked people um, in my personal life and, and that sort of thing. It's the next, very next thing I wanted to do was get on here and share the teachable moment and share some DBT skills. And so um, thank you so much for allowing me to stream into your life for a little bit and um you're welcome tiffany thank you guys so much and um you can learn more about me and what i do in my classes by going to emotionally sensitive.com and i will be doing more of these spontaneously and because a couple of people have asked now i may do some planned ones as well so have a great rest of the night or day depending on where you are in the world please remember you're never alone all right guys you're welcome, Valesco. You have a great night, too. Thank you. Um, how would I do? Okay. The still comments coming in, but I have to go, guys. I will talk to you next time. You can still comment below, and I they will still be visible to me to respond to later, though. Okay? All right. Bye for now.